Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today we're doing a review impressions of a knife I've had in my collection for a bit. This is the Koenig Arias in carbon fiber. Let's, let's talk about this knife. All right, so the name of this knife is the Koenig Arias. This is the first iteration of the Arias. The one that's pretty popular right now is the Mini Arias, which is a much smaller version of this. I actually owned that and sold it, but this is the full version. I found this one on DLT Trading. Manufacturer is Koenig Knives. You can see that right on there. Uh, this particular design is uh, between uh, Koenig and uh, Schwartz. Um, so uh, Chris, Chris Schwartz, I think. I can't remember. Schwartz and Koenig uh, came up with this design together. I love, love this design. I think it's really wonderful. So those are the two designers that actually came up with this. So let's talk about the materials. This is carbon fiber, twill carbon fiber. Really, really nicely done. It's a full piece of carbon fiber, not, you know, not peel uh, uh, peel ply texture kind of thing put on top there's no g10 underneath it's solid uh, and then this is titanium over here and the clips got a little <sighs> sorry it's got a little piece of my jeans that, that get caught let me let me try to get rid of that <sighs> sorry <laughs> a little piece of uh, still there all right well we'll just let it be there um uh, it does have a lanyard loop in the back but it's nice and chamfered so it's not uncomfortable giant mouse i really wish you would learn how to do this because I don't own anything from you because you don't. Anyways, uh, love the jimping. Jimping goes all the way through. Feels like you got some good jimping on here. I love that design. Some people actually do a, a, a flipper delete. They don't care for it, which is fine. It's got a nice fuller thumb hole right here. I think it's great. I call it a fuller thumb hole because technically it, it's more like a fuller that's been holed out. And here's the fuller extending all the way through. So it works both ways. You can get your finger in there to your nail and do a full extension. This does come out to a beautiful hollow grind, a nice satin kind of pearlized finish there with a with a belt with a I'm not sure if that's probably belt satin there, maybe it might be hand satin, but this is like a pearlized kind of a, a bead blasted pearlized sort of mixed uh, finish there. Has a nice swedge on top. Uh, this particular one is M390, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, M390 blade steel. You can see that right there. Hollow grind, nice big thick knife goes out to a nice strong tip beautiful belly there this comes down to a very thin edge it's pretty sharp um, I did do some stropping when I first got it in it wasn't crazy crazy sharp but you know once you strop it up it, it you know gets it's very nice and slicey nice jimping here on the lock bar it does have a little cutaway easily to get to there's a steel bar uh, insert over travel stop which is nice there is some weight uh, the lock bar is does have a cutaway it's not on the inside Surprisingly sharp for a Koenig knife here, which makes it a little bit of a pocket shredder. Kind of wish that was not so. This is a pretty aggressive clip. It's not super bendy, super friendly, but it works. It does work going in and out of the pocket. I will say that. You've got the backs, uh, the uh, lanyard loop back here, which almost has kind of a floating ability right here, but it's pretty solid in there. These are all T8s here. This is a T8 there as well, T8 there. Um, hidden hardware as far as that. It's not fully hidden in there. It does pop up a little bit as you can see, so it's not completely out of the way. The titanium has great weight relief on the inside. It is uh, milled out. Ironically enough, if you look at the, the carbon fiber, it was milled out as well. This nice solid piece of carbon fiber was milled out really nicely. And you, there's steel washers in here. Uh, it came with Delrin bearings and uh, um, the Delrin Barons are horrible. <laughs> just there's no way for me to say this. Uh, I wish Koenig would actually get some real, real uh, cage bearings. Uh, the cage bearings he uses are really subpar for such a nice knife. Um, I'm just trying to be nice about it because cage skiff cage bearings are really they're the best out there. They really are right now. And I and, and I say that because I put skiffs in just about everything, and a lot of custom knife makers are switching to skiffs. You know, there's a lot of people who are using them in their knives. Uh, uh, Rob Johnson's. Um, Hog House, uh, let's see here who else, uh, Tactile Knife Company, um, the SBK Lamia, all those people are using the, the skiffs already um, because they're just it, they're just that much better. The Delring worked okay when I first got it, but the problem is because it's a resin plastic with the steel ball bearings, maybe ceramic, it starts to break down, stuff gets in there, resin doesn't hold up, it can get overheated, it just it doesn't hold up like a phosphor bronze washer does. And what uh, what, K what skiff cage bearings are, they aren't just crimped over in a ceramic ball. They're like phosphor bronze washers milled out with a radius hole and you pop the ceramic ball in there and there's no room for stuff to get in there. They're just really, really well. And the, their specs and their tolerances on the size and the diameter of their ball bearings are perfect. 
uh, it almost fixes any uh, pivot lash or blade blade um, um, uh, yeah pivot lash pivot lash that you have so if a knife kind of rocks going here you put skips in there usually that's because the ball bearings aren't all e uh, the same diameter it fixes a lot of those issues so I do understand when people talk about replacing skips and some things because sometimes when people will take these out they'll put new ones and they'll over tighten it and they'll get little indentions on the titanium scales and stuff like that which is is dumb you know you you don't over tighten a, a pivot especially on a, a aluminum frame you just you just don't you don't do that that's not smart right you don't want to do that and create weird indentions and people who do that don't shouldn't be replacing anything right um so I've seen that. I've seen that happen. It's like, well, I tightened this, and it just, and then when I tighten it, now it just goes doop, 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 bumps. Yeah, because you just put the ceramic balls are way harder than the titanium, way harder than steel, and now it put little dents into your, to your blade or likely your scales. Yeah, you just kind of messed it up, right? But so if you didn't know that, if you do decide to replace it, just tighten it to the point where there's no blade rock. That's the idea. You tighten it up. I go slowly, and usually there's a little blade rock right before I get there, and then when it's just tight enough, then I know, okay, that's it. That's where I need to be. And that's where I usually will get that, like, nice control drop shut action. When I got this, it was guillotine drop shut. I didn't care for that. It was like a, a Grismo, you know, a Rask or, or a Norseman. I, I, don't, I don't like that. I don't like that crazy drop shut. You know, it's like um, Herman's Sting. Just, if you don't get your finger out of the way, whoop, it's going to get sliced, right? Um, I prefer a more control drop. So, um now i have that and it's way better way way better than that so all right so the blade we talked about that how it opens and closes we got a flipper we got a fuller we got a frame lock nice cutaway it's got a little jimping here which is good easy to access easy to control didn't have to tune it it wasn't over tight it, it, you know so i can easily drop it it's, it's very ergonomic do like that so let's get into the measurements of the knife after i rambled for a long time before we even getting into the you know the measurements, that's crazy, sorry. Four ounces because of the carbon fiber and a lot of the nice weight relief that's going on inside the scale. So weight relief here, weight relief here, that really removes a lot of that weight. So that's really nice. All right, so let's look at the overall length of this one. This is the large one. So we're looking at one going, uh, it's about from there to the clip right there, you're about eight and a half inches, maybe just a little bit bigger than eight and a half inches. The overall handle length that you have here, you're gonna go about four and a half inches, probably all the way to here. Uh, no choke up, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, three and a half inches from the very tip of the blade to the top of the handle, actual cutting length is gonna be right at just under three and a half inches, just under, so maybe, yeah, three and, Seven eight uh, seven sixteenths, maybe three and seven sixteenths, right? So let's look at the blade stock thickness. I mean, this is where it's pretty thick. I mean, it's not a thin blade, so you know, take that for for what it's worth. So let's look right here. One hundred and fifty eight thousandths of an inch. That's not a thin blade, right? And uh, let's look at it right here. Can we? Uh, I'm gonna have to hold it. Going out to the tip here. One hundred sixty eight thousandths of an inch. Going back here. 160 thousandths of an inch, so it's almost thicker on the outside. That's interesting. 170 thousandths of an inch. Interesting. Very, very interesting. If I go down a little bit lower, does that change it? Wow. Okay, how about up here? Wow, it's actually thinner going back. That's, that's, wasn't expecting that. But there you go. I mean, it's not a thin blade stock. If it wasn't for this really nice big hollow grind, you know, it might not be as slicey as, as it should be. So there you go. All right, so the category. Is it a budget knife? No. Is it a super budget? Absolutely not. It's a regular knife. One to three hundred dollars. No. Is it a higher end knife? Three to six hundred dollars? No. It's in the custom mid tech. It's definitely over six hundred dollars. So, on this particular one, I believe I paid a thousand fifty. So you know that's what you get for this one. Um, carbon fiber, the unique milling and the shape and everything on here puts it into that range. So this was the first knife that I spent in that category. Now, if you buy Koenig just because you're safe queens, you stick them in in your case and you never use them. It won't matter to you. It won't, because you'll never do anything to them. You'll leave them just as is. Somehow, I don't understand people who collect stuff that they never use, because how do you not get to use it? Like, if I collect cars, I'd still want to drive it. You know, if I had a car, I mean, I may not go ride across country with it, but I'd still want to go drive in the neighborhood, ride maybe on a racetrack or something to experience it. Wouldn't want to have it and never use it. Just, to me, that's just insane. But that's 
I respect that. People have the right to have safe queens and never use them. It is absolutely your call. It's your collection. You do what you you do you. But everything that I have, I carry. And that's my choice. And if I don't carry it, it's a catch and release, right? I'm going to sell it. So, uh, and that's fine, right? It allows me to get other things. And that's kind of how I continue to experience more and more knives. But in this case, this is one I, I do enjoy carrying. I do like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a cool knife. I'm glad I have this. This is probably, I looked at the titanium versions. I looked at this. I really, li I really like the, 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 the carbon fiber version the most. Probably was a little more expensive than the regular titanium, even with the milling patterns. But I'm okay with that because this is a big chunk of titanium. I mean, a big chunk of carbon fiber and it's very milling. I mean, to get all this precision, you know, you, you know, you probably find more titanium, more carbon fiber you have to get rid of than, than you can actually use. And I get that. So there you go. But I do like it. I do like it. So there you go. All right. So that's the category. So its purpose is the EDC hard use collection piece. Absolutely can be a collection piece. Obviously, this is collection piece category. For some people, it's a safe queen. Never use it. Totally get it. It's your call, your knife, your money, right? Um, could it be EDC? Absolutely could be EDC. I EDC the heck out of this. I like EDCing this. I enjoy carrying it. I enjoy opening boxes, letters, packages, things like that, cases of water. I do. I do. I enjoy that very much. For me, it's definitely an EDC. Is that a hard use? No, some people will. And depending on your level of your collection, your pieces that you have, this could absolutely be a hard use piece. Um, I use my Manganese Mac too. Uh, as a hard use knife, I blows me away. But it, that's a knife that just feels right being used like that. And I have not stopped since I bought it. It was one of the first kind of grill pieces I got, and I enjoy using the heck out of it. And I cannot see myself not using that knife every year when my son does his FFA. We have to go clean out a stall for a sheep or something. I'll go cut down sunflower. I call them sunflower trees because they're usually like eight to ten feet tall, and they got a stalk that's two to three inches long. But you kind of have to chop them, so I'll have a fixed blade that I'll be chopping the stock with, the stock, the stock of the thing, and then I'll use my my Magnes Mac to cut you know them in half at a little higher level and stuff like that to get through all of that. So yeah, uh, that's absolutely hard. You could do the same for this if you had a multiple of these, right? Um, I don't know how much you would cover your warranty if you use them like that. I I, I get the feeling that. I guess he believes his knives are probably more safe queens mostly and you hardly use them. I don't know. So there you go. Um, that's, I'm, I'm biased. I am biased because I read that article. I'm so sorry, guys. If some of you guys don't agree, that's, I get it. Your call, your call. But that's my opinion. You know, you watch this for my opinion, whether you agree or disagree, and you may love to disagree with me, and that's okay. My only thing I ask is when you don't like what I'm saying or you don't, give me a reason. Make it a rational argument. Have a basis for where you're coming from. Don't just spew, that's stupid. That doesn't cut it here, right? It can be stupid in certain circumstances, but explain why. Explain why, right? And if you have a rational reason, I'll be like, hey, I can defer to that, but I don't agree with it because for my case, that may not apply or I don't see it the same way. And that's okay. That is all right, right? We have the right to agree to disagree. So... Love to hear your opinions on this knife. Love to hear what you think about that. So there we go. All right. Uh, hard use. I already said the thing going to ergos and feel. Handles, opening, closing. It's great. I love that. It's a very unique Koenig sound. You get a very unique Koenig acoustic. Like you do with a Holt Blade Works. You do with the brown knives. You do with uh, Skiff. You do with, uh, I think, uh, custom Trevor Burgers. They have very unique sounds. You know, I do it with Old Lamic Custom. I do it with McNeese. has unique sounds, you know. Uh, there's knives that just have a very traditional acoustic sound from for whatever reason in their process it gives it a unique acoustics hermans have that unique sound uh for sure so um the the handles the fuller works really well it's nice you can use the thick of your finger your nail the flipper works really great opens up uh, it's got nice uh, texturing chamfering all the way around nice contoured shape makes it very comfortable in hand it's not too thin you can get a beautiful grip no sharp edges here so you can squeeze down there's no hot spots i do like that there's no chimping up here but it's okay it's flat enough that you know I, i'm not going to be chopping with this knife i mean if i had to and survive i would absolutely because you know what's the point of having a nice knife if you're don't make it through wherever you're at. Like, let's say you get stuck in a snowstorm, you get stuck in an Arizona desert, you get stuck in the woods. For whatever reason, this is your only knife. You're going to use it as you need to, right? And I think it could probably get you through that. 
Um, I, there's no question. It would probably show the signs of being through that, but it would no, it, you know, it would have more meaning to you if you got through that with this knife, right? Because it's a knife that kept you alive. So you know that, that might make it the knife more valuable. It would for me at least. But um, I think the opening, the closing is great. Lanyard loop is great. I mean, if that's a big deal, just it's done well and it does have a little cutaway, so it does hide, but it's also done nicely with chamfering, so it's not com uncomfortable and it's in hand and I'm flipping, which is, I said earlier, I wish Giant Mouse would take a, you know a lesson, uh, learn you know from this, because their clips are just so uncomfortable. Um, all right, so um, what else? The lanyard. We talk about the texture, chamfering, all that good stuff. The the jimping on the flipper is great. All right, opening, and closing, really nice. Reverse flick, uh, thumb flick. I can do it even with my Band-Aid here, and I can do it left-handed, right? And get down here, reverse flick, or I can do the thumb flick here. Uh, I can do the flipper. I can also do the slow roll if you need to, right? So that's always nice. So there's lots, lots of options for this. Um, opening and closing is great, and when you drop it, you clear the detent. So here's the detent right there, but it's a ramp. So let's let's see that. So you can see the ramp. It goes up slowly, right? And then the engagement's a good 20, 15, 20%. Locked in there, no blade play. Uh, no pivot lash. We got the nice detent when it locks in. Ready? Nice clickety. No detent lash in there. It's in there solid. So we got all that going on. And then the close is just very traditional acoustic of a coning. I like that. All right, so fidget factor. You got great flipping. You got a great fuller that can reverse flick. If I can get my finger in there, reverse flick really well, thumb flick really well. And then you this, you know, You've got it all the way up here too, so if I wanted to just use this little part up here, I don't have to get my th finger in there, I can just use that part as well, so that's nice, right? I can do it left and right hand, it works really well. The flipper is outstanding, the jimping is perfect, my finger doesn't slip off and fall off. I wish people would learn having to have that little extra jimping, a little catch, a little ridge right there, that's so important, really makes it work. This is just done well, I give them kudos for that, absolutely love, love that. All right. So fidget factor, one out of 10, what do I give it? Um, left and right handed, access to the, the lock bar is super easy, it's not difficult, it doesn't tire my hand down. So to me, this gets a six. Um, yeah, it gets a six, a solid six. I don't have bonus front, front, front flipping, I don't have low, you know, extra other things, so, but it does everything so well. So it's a solid seven, out, a six out of ten. Could be a seven, maybe. I mean, if I was in a better mood, uh, not having read that article, probably might have been a seven. I don't know. Right now, I'm a little biased. So, but it's a solid six, and everything works really nicely. So I do like that. Um, as far as fidgety goodness, I would give this an A plus. Um, I give it a ninety nine. No reason why I give it a ninety nine is because sometimes I do get on that lock bar just a little bit, right? But it's it's a it's a 99 it's an a plus it's does it really really well my overall thoughts and recommendations i mean it's a high-end knife it's going to cost a lot you got to have the money for it um but i i do recommend it i've seen cheaper versions that are titanium whatever for whatever reason don't understand why some people can sell this for 780 and then others sell it for more don't know why carbon fiber is that much more expensive i don't i don't get that maybe it's a specialized material as opposed to a basic Titanium stamp, I guess. I don't know. So, um, you know, there you go. I That's kind of up in the air. It's kind of a personal opinion, I'm going to guess there. Yeah. Uh, my overall thoughts on this thing is very good. It's very good. Um, I'm, I'm going to recommend it. I think it's a great knife. I think if you're willing to spend it, it's a really good knife. I like the larger version. I think the smaller one's great for smaller hands. I think it's a great option. If you get the smaller one, get the flipper delete. My personal opinion, I think that's a better overall design for the smaller one the bigger one i think the flipper makes sense some people will still want to do flipper delete i get it that's your call you do what you you do you right i like the flipper on the large one i think it's done really well and it works well so i'm a big fan of it so there you go that's my thoughts on there um love to hear your thoughts love to hear your disagreement with me and tell me i'm an idiot uh tell me i'm blasphemous maybe maybe he's you know got demigod status or something i don't know um, I don't really care if anybody has it. You know, I think every person is just a person. They make they they may have a great skill set, a beautiful artisan thing. You know, I, I think every person deserves the same respect that every other person deserves. Right? There's no one who's a demigod in as far as the knife community. I think I, I respect Brian because he's a cool guy to talk to. I respect Trevor Berger. He's a gentleman. I respect uh, um, 
Joe from Holt Blade Works. He's a fantastic person to talk to. I enjoy these people as people. They're just great people. They, they have a beautiful skill set, a beautiful design ethic. I, lo I love that. And I think to me that's just fantastic. And that makes the community wonderful because they're good people. Uh, Jonathan McNeese, another great guy. There's just so many really wonderful. Les and Marianne from TRM. There's just, I could go on and on. There's just really, really, really wonderful people out there. And so um, I've not met Koenig. Uh, I was at Blade Show. They had like four knives to sell, and they were like, they were the price of cars. And I, it was unrealistic and unattainable. And then they had one knife that auctioned that was, it seemed like the price of a house. I don't know. It was, it was ridiculous. It felt so un, un, unattainable and so unreachable that it, 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 I don't know. It's just like it didn't feel like you were part of the community. You know what I mean? I, 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 Fine. You know, even Peter Carey, who I met, and I saw his custom knife, which was ridiculously gorgeous and beautiful, and the action was out of this world. I could talk to the guy. I mean, he was, like, approachable. I like that. So, sorry if I have a bias here, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was just on a bad day or whatever. I don't know. But uh, that's my experience. I'm just sharing with you. That's my review. I think it's a great knife. I think it's wonderful. Um, I don't think it's better than anything else. I think it's a cool knife to have in your collection. If you like the aesthetic, if the aesthetic may not appeal to you, don't get it. If the, if the aesthetic appeals to you, I would say go for it, right? I, I think it's worth it's worth considering if you like it and you get a chance to handle it. So that's my thoughts. Love to hear your love to hear your response. Hey, if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button down below? Subscribing and liking the channel really helps out the channel. Allows the channel to produce more content, do more things, ultimately, more things for you guys. So thank you for supporting Rob's Nerdy Knives. I really do appreciate you guys who watch the videos, who like the videos, who subscribe to the channel, who watch the live stream, who's just part of the community. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Um, also, a big shout out to the channel members. I appreciate you guys so much. You guys are a huge instrumental part of me continuing and doing things. Not only has your uh, generosity been just uh, amazing um, because you allow me to do things way sooner than I ever thought I'd be able to do. Um, your support of the channel have been instrumental in being able to do the giveaways, do the shipping. So, I mean, quite frankly, if you guys didn't know, this, the channel members also help with the regular giveaways. So, if you're not a channel member, you should also thank the channel members because they're pretty cool. They, they help everybody. They help everybody who's part of the community. And I just appreciate them. So out of their generosity, I want to do something nice back for them. I do two exclusive things for channel members. One, I do a once a month members giveaway. It's usually better than a budget banger that I usually give away for everybody. I do an exclusive nicer knife giveaway. So if you're interested in that, um, sounds cool, let me know. I'd love to have you as a channel member. There's a link down below in the description for three different tiers. I don't care what tier you'd want to be. If you want to be a tier, great. If you don't want to be one, that's fine too. Uh, I don't want anybody ever to feel pressure to be a channel member. I want you to want to be a channel member, right? Um, and if you do become a channel member, I also like to send brand new channel members a channel member sticker and a little thank you note. So if you became a brand new channel member recently, you haven't emailed me, email me with your name and address so I can mail you a channel member sticker and say thank you. If you've also been a channel member all this time and you've never emailed me or you were a channel member before and became a channel member again and you're both our members right now, email me with your name and address if you've never done so, you've never requested a channel member sticker, never gotten one, so I can mail you a sticker and say thank you. Thank you. I just want a little note just to appreciate you. In the three tiers, the third tier also you get a super special uber nerdy knife, uber nerd uh, kind of sticker. Let me know if you're an uber nerd and you, you haven't gotten that sticker. I want to mail that to you as well. Even if you got the other channel member sticker, Uber Nerds, you get, if you upgraded to the Uber Nerd, you never got your Uber Nerd, let me know. I want to send it to you. The rest of the channel members, I also do exclusive uh, early release, early content, exclusive uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff. You know, sometimes you get benefits and knife sales and early, you know, bids at, if I do a knife sale that's kind of open just to the channel members before I put it on Blade Binge or something like that. You know, there's different, there's little benefits. And I try to extend that to you guys just to show my appreciation. All right. Um, if you haven't already, maybe also check me out at Insta on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week.